Good afternoon. I apologize. I was having audio difficulties. Um, someone can go ahead and type in the message box and let me know that you can hear me now. Um, and that would be great. I want to welcome you all to the annual Beach and Shoreline Funding Workshop that is uh, administered today by the Lee County Visitor and Convention Bureau. This is a program, Lee County government, and it is utilizing the tourist development tax that we collect here in Lee County. So I'm going to jump right in. I apologize for making you wait. My name is Nancy McPhee, and I administer the program along with the fiscal team, Lucy and Lisa, here at the Visitor and Convention Bureau. Um, should you ever have questions um, outside of uh, today, you can ask either any of us. Um, the Beach and Shoreline Program is uh, funded by the Florida State Statute 26.4% of the tourist tax collections, and it's governed by the Florida State Statute. That's 125.0104, and I would encourage you to go ahead and read that at your leisure. Um, each county in, Le in, in Florida, it's up to them to determine what portions of the state statute they will utilize the tourist tax with. And 26.4 um, here in Lee County is dedicated to beach and shoreline. And I've outlined four of the uses that Lee County um, uses in determining eligibility. Our priority here in Lee County is shoreline renourishment, restoration, and erosion control. Uh, beach maintenance and emergency beach cleanup are also high priorities for us. And beach park facility, beach channel, estuary, and lagoon improvements are all eligible through the program, as well as program management. So again, I mentioned the tourist development tax in Lee County. Uh, by statute, there's several things you can fund with that in Lee County by our Lee County ordinance. We've determined, uh, the Board of County Commissioners have determined three. In addition to beach and shoreline, they are using 20% of the tourist tax collections to, to take care of our spring training facilities. And more than half of what we collect goes into advertising and promotions. Um, there are several other grant programs available through the VCB, and they come out of that pot, the advertising and promotions pot. So primarily, we are a marketing organization, so we do lean heavily on our Lee County Natural Resources staff to help us in administering the Beach and Shoreline program. We appreciate their help. So I thought I would show, just give you a snapshot of where the Tourist Development Council Beach and Shoreline funding allocations have been broken out, and that's determined by what you ask for. Um, primarily, we're paying for maintenance of our beach and shoreline facilities and our beaches. Um, almost half of the funding allocations since fiscal year 2000 have gone to maintain what we have that keeps visitors coming back. 26% goes to beach nourishment projects. So we um, there's a process to that. We, there's several criti critically uh, eroding eroded beaches in Lee County, and they, along with state and federal partners, are renourished uh, every seven years or so. 20% of what we've funded to date goes to capital improvement projects, many of which uh, take several years to complete. Uh, so we have several in progress right now. 5% um, is the operational. I mentioned program management. That would be the cost of the Bureau managing the program. And then there's other projects. And years ago, uh, we still have other as a category for you to select when you're put, submitting your um, funding request. Uh, how long are, you know, it's up to the TDC. It's up to how much funding we have available each year. There were monitoring projects in the past that, that would fall in the other category. Um, I haven't seen very many projects um, come through that have been funded in the other category, but um, they do exist. Um, you can always try. So to date, since fiscal year 2000, the TDC's allocated $132 million in uh, funding to projects in Lee County. And you can see a complete list of all the pro projects that have ever received funding on our partner website at leevcb.com on the Beach and Shoreline funding page. <clears throat> so speaking of the maintenance pot, 
I wanted to just take a minute to mention emergency beach cleanup. This is an allocation that every year we, uh, the Tourist Development Council makes to Lee County in, in the event that there's an emergency that we need to dedicate funds to. So over the years, there's been very few requests to that program. Uh, since fiscal year 94 uh, through fiscal year 17, there were only $731,000 allocated. Um, and you can see here on the list, most of it was related to red tide or red drift algae. Um, we've been very lucky, haven't we? So that all changed this past fiscal year and expenditures related to beach cleanup as it pertains primarily to red tide exceeded $2 million. And um, only about 123,000 was actually funded by the Tourist Development Council or paid for, I should say. Um, the bulk of it was um, paid for by DEP who gave a grant to several coastal counties on the Gulf when uh, red time became an emergency and the governor declared an emergency. So you need to know that there is a beach, and cl a beach um, cleanup process. Again, I mentioned Lee County gets the allocation. The Parks and Recreation Department has a written protocol, as many of you I know do, but theirs pertains to uh, what happens, you know, when to pull the trigger on making a request for emergency cleanup funding. Uh, just a matter of keeping us in the loop and um, municipalities that are expending dollars to clean up incidents which are outside the scope of your normal operation. Uh, can be reimbursed through the Emergency Beach Cleanup Fund. And um, for the past few years, that's been only $100,000 that's been allocated. And again, you can see we haven't used it up until this past fiscal year. So um, don't hesitate to reach out for questions. I'm going to make the uh, Lee County Parks Emergency Beach Cleanup Policy available to all of you in an email after at the conclusion of this webinar, but um, please know that it does exist um, in addition to their beaches. You, if you're a municipality or a group that manages a public beach can request reimbursement as long as you give us a heads up and let us know. So back to this year, um, the cycle again will open at the conclusion of this webinar, the request period for you to request fiscal year 1920 funding and that would be for projects that begin anytime after October 1st of this year through September 30th of this, um, 2020. So um, we're here today at the webinar. The deadline for you to submit a request through the online portal we've got set up is five o'clock on February 22nd. Then we dive right in. The Lee County staff, I mentioned natural resources, assists us and the county attorney um, take time reviewing the requests, conducting site visits, and making determinations. And that's all in preparation for two reviews that if you request through for the next fiscal year, you should attend. One of them is the Coastal Advisory Council workshop. That's on March 21st here at the um, Admin East building downtown at 10 a.m. And then on April 25th, the Tourist Development Council will conduct their review of um, requests for next fiscal year at 2 p.m. So both of them are public workshops and it's the purpose being for discussion and um, making recommendations to the full Tourist Development Council who then will consider the funding requests at their May meeting. In September, the Board of County Commissioners formalizes the funding for next fiscal year through their um, regular, their annual budget process. And once the fiscal year opens, you receive uh, interlocal agreements from my office for you to formalize by your council or superiors. Um, we usually get those funding agreements back to you by December and uh, we have to bring them to the board all together. So the sooner we get yours back, the sooner we can uh, have the Board of County Commissioners formalize them and get them back to you. And at that point, you're given a contract from which, against which you can uh, bill us as you uh, have ongoing expenses. And the last thing I added was, again, this is a year-round program. The staff here at the VCB works really hard, Lisa in fiscal and Lucy, and they help process your reimbursements. So it's very important. Uh, we encourage you with maintenance projects to request reimbursements quarterly 
and we encourage you to include status reports. We know that capital improvements um, are a lengthier process, so um, we we just want you to keep us updated. So I wanted to just very briefly mention status reports in the interlocal agreement that you're given. <clears throat> Uh, a few years ago, the county attorney had me add that status reports are expected on a quarterly basis. Um, if you have capital projects and you're not billing us quarterly, we would encourage you to submit them in March, and that's in preparation for the next request period, and in September, which is the end of the fiscal year. So to, to get a status report uh, blank form, which is interactive, you go to our um, leevcb.com and click on funding programs and you can find um, the status report there that you can download. And here's an example of one on the left. You can see this is um, how it was filled out. In this case, it was Lee County who purchased a tram on Fort Myers Beach. And they uh, just were put in, this, this one that was purchased by the Tourist Development Council was put into operation just last week. And again, this gives us backup on, um, uh, that the project is complete and that it's you are recognizing the Tourist Development Council in your in this case on the body of the tram so that's just an example and these are provided <clears throat> should the Tourist Development Council want to see them I, I keep them that doesn't usually happen but in the future this could become part of the request process is to actually update uh, upload a copy of your status report. It hasn't happened for this cycle, but I'm thinking in the future your most recent status report will be handy to include. So please keep up to date with them. <clears throat> so once you once we've determined that your request is uh, legally sufficient and, and eligible through the program by state statute and county ordinance, um, we look for other things in your request to help the TDC make a good recommendation for funding. And one of them is to clearly delineate the, the proximity to enhance, enhancement of the beach or shoreline. So there's going to be a map in, in the uh, application portal for you to include so that you can you can see that. Sometimes we bring staff out to see uh, the project location to help in those determinations. And that would include the county attorney. She's joined us on site visits. Um, when you're filling out your request, you need to remember to, to demonstrate a direct and quantifiable benefit enhancing the tourism product here in Lee County. Um, we're going <clears> to <throat> Always keep in mind that consideration is given to projects to diversify the destination in terms of tourism assets spread throughout the county. We want nothing more than to see requests from every area of the county um, each year, and that is our hope. Um, uh, informing us on other funding sources is, is definitely um, something that you should be doing. Um, priority is given to capital projects that have matching funds. While it's not a requirement, we certainly would hope that the requesting agency is um, seeking other sources or putting funding in themselves. So you're going to be asked that on your request. Um, you can also phase a request if a capital project is uh, such an amount or you're in permitting for a few years, you need to be able to show what you're going to come back perhaps and potentially ask for in a future year. And then finally, you must have a well-defined scope of work that demonstrates that the project is feasible and permittable through all required regu regulating agencies. So um, hopefully you've done that homework or had someone do it for you and you've spelled it out in your application. We will ask for you to include a breakdown of costs and I'm going to share a budget uh, example of a budget sheet in just a second. Um, down at the bottom of this slide are the links for you to, to check out the state statute and the county ordinance on your own if you'd like. And again, this PowerPoint will be shared at the at the conclusion so that you can share it with other people uh, if there's other people helping you in formulating your request. Here's the list that we see every year, and it, um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's an all-inclusive list, but this is the list that we've generated, which we've seen over the years uh, things be requested, and um, clearly they're not eligible. So if it's on this list, you probably shouldn't bother requesting it. You can certainly put it in the column that shows a match 
which would be great, meaning that your agency is going to pay for it. So um, again, it's not inclusive. The, the county attorney is constantly checking the attorney general's opinion um, to see uh, if there's any changes. And um, that's why sometimes when you put a request in, we may come back to you for clarification because perhaps it's being challenged by the county attorney's office. Um, many of you do this on a regular basis, and I appreciate that. If you have a scope of work for a project that perhaps is, you know, out of the outside the box of what we've seen in the past, you can always send it to, to me no matter what time of year it is, and uh, I can share the scope with the county attorney so that you, for planning purposes, for future requests. So um, as far as accessing the online application, again, you're going to um, want to go to leevcb.com and click on the funding program tab, Beach and Shoreline, and then you're going to click on funding request form. And that's where you're going to jump right into the portal where the application lives. Many of you probably already have an account. You may need to change your password because you might forget it. If you've never had an account, you're going to uh, create a new one. And um, if you're a new employee at an agency that's received past funding, you may want to give us a call, Lisa or I here at the VCB, because it would be important for you to see the history for your organization. And I believe that you can copy and paste and uh, old requests so that half the work is done for you. So again, if you're a new employee, reach out to us if you try to get in and you can't right away because we want you to be able to see what uh, the historic uh, requests from your agency. Again, I don't believe there's been any changes to the to the request form. It's pretty easy. You pop, uh, in the, if it has a, a red star, which probably all of the questions do, you're going to not be able to move on unless you answer that question. Um, one of the things you need to uh, remember is that there is a character limit. So again, the name of project, a one or two sentence summary of the request in the project summary area. Um, the fiscal year, that should say fiscal year 1920, actually right there, I apologize. Fiscal year 1920, what is your request for next year? Um, that's where you're going to pop that amount in right there. And next is project type. What is what is the, what kind of project do you have? Um, there's only a few of you that would click beach nourishment. Most of you are clicking maintenance, and then some of you are clicking capital. If you think your project request doesn't fit anywhere else, put it in other, and we'll move it around if we have to later. Um, if it is uh, an other, then you need to explain in this box why it's an other. Your project priority, uh, this was included in the application several years ago when we had more uh, requests for funding and then we did uh, funding to, act, to be allocated. That hasn't happened the past few years, but we are allowing you as an agency to prioritize your requests. So if we could fund just three of your five requests, what are the top three? And that's um, where you would uh, prioritize in this area. The next page of the request is going to talk about future requests. So, you know, this is again, if it's a capital project and you need to phase it, this is where you're going to put what you anticipate coming back. Maybe you're just needing design and permitting money this year. What are you going to come back for for construction costs? You're going to pop it in here so the TDC understands the commitment they they may need to consider in the future. Um, if you receive previous funding, please list it in this area. For this, I mean, for that specific request. So you're br you're bringing a request to us which has had <clears throat> past funding. We we'd love to know that. Um, if you've got other funding sources, other agencies helping you, please list it down under the other funding sources area, and let us know whether they've been approved and um, the approved amounts. Remember, you can go start your request this week, should you feel ready, um, and you don't have to submit it. You can come back. It'll be saved in draft fashion for you. You can come back and finish it closer to the deadline if that's your desire. On this page, we're um, 
I'm going to give you an opportunity to talk more about your project. There's a description area. There's an overall context. Again, we want to know how this may fit into a bigger project. Maybe it's just one small component, but it's connected to a bigger beach and shoreline facility. Uh, what is the relationship? We need to understand how it relates to the repair, protection, or enhancement of the beach. And if it's a shoreline protection project, you might want to include your sh agency's shoreline protection plan, and that would be done as an upload. And the next couple of questions you can see um, allow you to upload a file uh, with a limiting size. So we encourage you to PDF all of your um, attachments that you want to upload and bundle them to save space. And um, you can, you'll be prompted to upload in the impact on tourism section. Some people like to include um, survey results, which is great because you know 80% of the visitors to your facility are tourists coming from out of area. You can upload that information, whether it's a survey or photos or whatever it might be. Project design and timeline. Again, you may have documents from other agencies. This is where you would upload estimates or timelines in this section here. All right, then you're gonna. It's gonna come to a close, and you're gonna get to submit when you're ready. Um, I wanted to just share a couple examples. Um, you know, you, we love pictures. The TDC needs to get a feel for how to understand it. Here's an example of a pavilion, and it, um, that was, uh, I think it was a request for design and permitting, uh, but this is ultimately what the facility will look like, uh, of course, with a beach behind it, I'm sure, um, and um, the TDC enjoys seeing uh, examples such as this. So this would be for a capital project. Here's another good example. It was part of a capital improvement project a few years ago. I love the map because there's so much detail and it's showing, I believe it was um, a request for the pier on the bay side of the island, but it shows the proximity. Remember I was talking about how does it fit into the bigger picture of the beach and shoreline facility. It shows walking paths, it shows access points, getting um, dune walkovers, which are also pieces that were funded through the program. So wonderful uh, presentation of, um, of, you know, getting a feel for where everything is located in a facility. Um, here's an example of the budget form. Again, we require this form be filled out by everyone. You will be able, it is an interactive form. You will be able to pop in the amount of money that you want uh, the TDC to fund. And then you can also list what you're matching it with. Maybe you have operating funds or going to use some of your general fund money. Um, remember, not all employees are uh, funded through the program. We want to fund those people that are boots on the ground, beach and shoreline maintenance workers, but you may have other staff that supports them. So you'd show that your, your cost, your expenses related to managing the facility. Some of the boxes under TD's request, under TDC request are blacked out. That's because you, it's not an eligible item. Cell phones used to be eligible. Years ago, they were dismissed, so we've listed them. Uniforms is another example. You certainly can list what you're paying for them to show in the match column. So the first column is what you're requesting from the TDC. And then all the way over on the right, the total project cost is reflected so that the TDC can see it. And you can see the two notations down at the bottom. Buildings must be open to the public in order to be eligible for funding. We have had requests from time to time for perhaps a facility for the maintenance equipment. That would not be an eligible request. So I know we sometimes pay for that maintenance equipment, but the only buildings we fund would be buildings that are open to the public, like a restroom. The uh, same with equipment and staff. Uh, it must be 100% assigned to the beach and shoreline facility in order to be 100% eligible. So if you have a piece of equipment that you're sharing with another department that's not on the shoreline, you can expect that the TDC will only pay for the portion that is dedicated to the beach and shoreline facility. Okay, so again, this budget form is required by everyone, and I'm pausing just to see and be sure that no one has any questions. So hopefully, uh, I'm assuming you can hear me because someone 
came and told me that you could. So um, don't hesitate to ask questions now or later if you have any. Here's the detail budget form. So in addition to the overall budget form, we know that you're buying lots of things with on the equipment line, right? Or on the um, operating supply line. We need to get a better handle on what what it is um, because believe it or not there are some things that are ineligible um, like picnic tables who knew so we don't fund them so you you know if you if it were to show up on this list I would have to you know review it with the county attorney and she'd come back with the ruling sometimes not all the time but sometimes a maintenance request like this one Portions of it are pulled out as ineligible. So give as much detail as you can on this form. These rows, I believe we've just listed a few items. You can add a row. It's it's a manipulate. You can manipulate it so that you can add the number of rows that you need. And this should match the first column on the form that preceded this. This column and this column should match. Okay, here's an, a good example of an agency that manages a lot of facilities, a lot of beach and shoreline facilities, and we it not only helps us track um, the, the amount going to a facility, but again, we want to be sure that all facilities are eligible. You'll remember a few years back that boat ramps became uh, no longer eligible through the program. So this is again an old fiscal year 15 i apologize but it it is a good example of all the different facilities that are being funded we have salaries um, shown as a match we have salaries that we're going to be paid request the tdc to pay for and this is a of course a lee county request with the, the number of facilities that you're you're seeing here so that's great backup we if you're in that if you're in that situation, include it if you can. So once you submit your application, the review process will begin. I mentioned that already. Lee County staff, the county attorney, if we need to visit, we'll give you a call. We might not need you, but we sometimes do visit. Um, the next review, uh, um, in a minute I'm going to show you some determination spreadsheets, but the, the reason we create the determination spreadsheets is for the Coastal Advisory Council, and again, their workshops on March 21st, and they are basically looking at whether it's a permittable, if, whether it's a feasible project. We're most interested in their feedback on the capital improvement projects. They don't really, they aren't really considering money but they may have an opinion, but uh, again, they have the technical backgrounds that we're looking uh, for input from on capital improvements. And then the Tourist Development Council will review it. And each of these groups gets uh, 10 days to two weeks to look at your project requests. Um, they rely heavily on the determination spreadsheets, but they uh, they may have questions for you. So again, the, both of the dates that you're seeing there should be um, on your calendar or the, pro the whoever's going to speak for your request should be at that workshop. Here's an example of the determination spreadsheet. You've seen it before if you've requested through us. We list the projects. We list the project name, the priority, and that's the agency's priority, the amount of funding they're going to request. What is the county attorney's determination, whether it's eligible, ineligible, or in this case, it could be eligible, but the TDC needs to determine legislative findings. So, um, and then we have her comments and um, they're exactly what she's wanting them to say in, included in this. And here's a little, here's an interesting one, the Matt Lachey Community Park Fishing Pier. She made a little footnote that once Lee County's population reaches 750,000 by state statute, we can no longer fund fishing piers. So you all need to remember that because we're getting close. Last I checked, we were at 739,000. So she's um, keeping track of things like that for us. But again, this is a helpful document for both the Coastal Advisory Council and the Tourist Development Council. And at each stage of the review, I'm emailing you or whoever the project manager is that's listed on the project request to remind them and they get copied on, uh, on these documents. 
Here's an example of last year's worksheet that we used at the Tourist Development Council workshop. And um, this was the day that they made their recommendations. You can see the amount requested column, and then we have an amount eligible column. Most everything, uh, I believe, was uh, fully eligible. In some cases, the, the money it may change if there's portions that are ineligible. There was one request that was deemed ineligible. And this year, we probably won't even leave ineligible requests on the sheet. We probably won't be allowing the Coastal Advisory Council or the Tourist Development Council to even see them. There's really no point once the county attorney says it's ineligible. So that's an example of the worksheet that then is given to the TDC to formalize at, I believe I said, the May meeting in uh, the upcoming year. So again, your deadlines, May 22nd, for your project request, the portal will close. It is open now. You can go in and play around, make sure you have uh, a login. And we would appreciate a status report by March 29th if there's been change. We know some of you uh, were great in getting them to us the end of last fiscal year. Um, you can just resubmit it if there's if it's a capital project, there's been no changes, just resubmit it. But it's important that we give the TDC an idea of where you are on a project, on an active project, if you're requesting more money for it or perhaps for something else in your agency. They want to know how much we've already allocated to your agency. So I do not think I see any questions. Um, um, I apologize if I've missed you, but I don't I don't think that anybody's raising their hand or asking any questions. Uh, again, I'm going to go ahead and share the um, PowerPoint probably via Dropbox for all of you to see and I am also going to share a copy of the um, Lee County Emergency Beach Creek Cleanup Policy so that you know that that exists, how that works, compare it to your own. Hopefully we won't have another episode like we did last year but please know that we're here if you have any questions. Lee County Parks and Recreation um, ha is wonderful. Their fiscal manager, Cindy Mitar, and the VCB fiscal manager, Lucy Maldonado, uh, did a great job of navigating the emergency beach cleanup that we all lived last year. So I thank you for everything you do every single day out there on the beaches. And um, that it concludes our webinar. And I appreciate all of your time this afternoon. Don't forget to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you so much.